Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, Shelly's Millions. In today's video, we're going to go over the student loan forgiveness. We're going to talk about whether we think it's fair or not. <laughs> we're going to talk about when the form will be available, which I'm just going to cut to the chase. They're saying that 8 million student loans will be forgiven automatically, but they're also saying like, don't rely on the government to take care of that for you. So they're saying to go and fill out a form. But the thing is, the form's not available yet. And they're saying early October, it should be available. And then this isn't mandatory in order to get the loan forgiveness, but they're saying that you should try and apply for it by November 11th of 20, sorry, November 15th of 2022. That's this year. That's like two and a half months from now. So forms should be available to apply or like identify yourself as potentially eligible for student loan forgiveness. And then it's supposed to take about four to six weeks after it's approved, but it doesn't say how long it will take to get it approved. And then from there, um, from there, hey, I lost my train of thought because there was like a pop-up that showed up on my computer. From there, then they would apply the debt relief if you qualify. And they're saying to do it by November 15th, because remember that there's a pause on student loan repayments right now, but those are going to resume in January of 2023. So basically, if you apply by November 15th, that gives you the six weeks so that basically by the time your payments resume, it'll be on the new loan amount. So that's why they're saying that, um, but they'll continue to process even after that. Another question that came up a lot yesterday was, will student loans that are in um, default or already in collections, will those qualify for the student loan forgiveness? Yes and no. First, you need to sign up for a program called Fresh Start Student Loan Program. And I will have all the links. They're already in the description tonight. Um... Okay, LaShawn, you you started at July. Your student loans, you took them out in July. So that's something else that people wanted to know. It wouldn't apply to new loans, right? Like if you took out a loan today, you wouldn't have any debt forgiveness. But if you took out your loan prior to July, hold on, I wrote it down. I feel like it's a weird date. Yeah, prior to July 20th of 2022, then that would be eligible for um, $10,000 in student loan debt forgiveness if you may, oh, you started the application. That might have been for a different program because this program, the form's not available yet, but there is something called PSLF, which stands for Public Service Loan Forgiveness, and that would be for like nurses, first responders, um, teachers. If you're in any of those fields, then that means that you could potentially qualify for the PLS, PSLF Loan Forgiveness Program your entire loan could be potentially forgiven. And what else? And it's hot in here, so I'm turning on the fan. Um, they're also saying that in the past, that loan forgiveness hasn't gotten approved very easily. So they're saying that there's a much better chance of having that loan forgiveness approved now. So they're saying to reapply. If for any reason you were part, like you applied for the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, the PSLF, um, and it was denied in the past, they're saying to try again now. So um, were you a teacher? Was that one of the fields? Because that form, that program has been around, but it used to be harder to qualify and now it's supposed to be easier. Uh, something else that people want to know. Also, if you need to go to that website to reapply, because the deadline to reapply for that program is October 31st of this year. So, hi, Scotty. How are you? Where are you working now? Also, we haven't seen Pelican in a while. Okay. 
Um, oh, I should put your comments up on screen too. I'm a little tired today. Not too tired to forget to wear my Weeble shirt. So if you haven't yet, please sign up. I think they're still giving out six free stocks. I'm going to use my link in the description down below. And then if you do, let me know which free stocks you get. And I think I'm going to try out a new app called Moomoo, but I haven't yet. Okay. Um, all right. So Sonia, you're saying it's not going to happen. It'll end up in the Supreme Court and the Democrats know it. They're just saying that because the 2022 elections, it has to pass Congress. Lawyers are ready to go. So I actually took a screenshot uh, from Under the Desk's news TikTok, and it says, does anyone know how likely the forgiveness is to realistically pass? And she says, it's done. It could be reversed by a future Republican administration, and that would be real hard. That's that's what it says. So I guess there's a way to undo it. But at this point, it has passed. And the only way that they would overturn it is like if there was a different administration, like if there were more Republicans in the House and the Senate after the midterm elections, they could potentially overturn it. But it's sounding like it's unlikely to me. Okay. All right, LaShawn, you're an, you're an employee, like a, a teacher. Um, I think that would be the program that you're applying under. Okay. Uh, Ready for the World says, good stuff, but everyone wants to hear about my journey, decompressing, unemployment progress, exercise, dream job list, etc. So much good karma coming my way. It's exciting. And hello, Rocky. All right. Well, since you asked, <laughs> um, I went to the gym today. I worked out for like 45 minutes, but I got, I don't know, like really tired in the afternoon. I did not sleep well at all last night. I went to bed at like nine and then I woke up at 12.30 a.m. And like I was wide awake at 12.30 a.m. And I stayed up till 3.30 in the morning, like doing nothing, like kind of like just scrolling TikTok, hoping that I would fall back asleep. But when you're scrolling, you're not going to fall back asleep. So then at like 3.30, I was like, I really need to go to sleep because I have to wake up early and go to the gym. And I didn't really start to fall back asleep until like 7.30 in the morning. And so I was very tempted to like just hit snooze on my alarm and not go to the gym. But I did. I woke up and I went. Um, dream job, I still don't know. I'm still figuring that out, right? I'm, and I'm really torn between like going full time at YouTube versus like taking a regular job. I am on unemployment again. I'm like frustrated about that, but it will all work out. It'll be okay. Uh, hey, Rocky. Oh, got a government job. That should be part of that public service, the PSLF program. That would be, if the form was available, it was different than this student loan forgiveness. Guys, and then again, the website that you want to go to for most of the information on this is studentaid.gov. So I will type that in the chat right now. Um, and then if you need to find out more information about, the, I'm looking at my notes, about the Fresh Start student loan program. Um, I'm going to link to the nerd, the nerd wallet article that we were reading together about that yesterday is in the chat. Oh yeah. I don't want to talk about it. It's just, we parted ways. Let's just say that it wasn't like my choice. Um, <laughs> they brought me in to do a job and then I feel like I wasn't given the, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not there anymore. <laughs> It's no fault of my own. Okay. Um, you are welcome, LaShawn. Okay. Sonia says, nothing is for free. People who never have student loans, people who paid off their loans will be the one paying for this. And even the ones who get 10,000 will be paying back more in tax. So that's something that comes up a lot, right? A lot of people are like, well, I already paid off my student loans. So this sucks for me. Or I never went to college. It sucks for me. Here's the thing. And like, I'm not judging because like I, this is actually something that I'm really trying to work on myself. You can't 
well, you can do whatever you want. But for me, I'm really trying to not look at it as like they got something that I didn't, right? I was talking about this yesterday. I didn't take on any student loans. I went to community college, grew up, you know, in welfare. And um, I qualified for the Pell Grant. The Pell Grant's the thing that would get you $20,000 instead of just the 10000 And you have to be so low income for your family to qualify for the Pell Grant that like for me, like my mom was so excited when I went to college and everything. Like that was really a chance for me to like continue my education and hopefully like not continue a life kind of in poverty. Um, and my mom's totally happy and she does well with what she has, but like parents always want more for their kids. Right. And my mom was no different. And like college even though it was just community college was supposed to be a step in the right direction towards that. Um, what else did I want to say about that? So what under the desk news said about this is that, you know, the government's always just shuffling money around, you know, we just sent um, like 2 billion, 200 billion. We sent a bunch of money to the Ukraine to help them buy weapons and, um, in like the new whatever they just passed they're they have the ability now to renegotiate the prescription drug medications for medicare and they're thinking that that's going to save them 300 billion and they have 300 billion set aside for this program so they're just kind of shuffling the money around you know, okay, so I had like this concept for taxes, right? So like, I also don't have kids. Um, so let's say, and a lot of our tax money goes for schools, it goes towards fixing the roads, right? It would be kind of cool if there was like a tax program where like, if I didn't want my money to go towards buying or supplying weapons, that instead, I could put my tax dollars towards keeping the oceans clean, Right. And then like, I don't know, they would have to like somehow keep the tax percentages the same, but like I could tell them specifically like, okay, please don't use my money for this, but please use it for that. Because that's kind of like what our government is doing. Like they have the tax dollars and then right now it's totally up to them to decide how they want to use it. And we have representatives that are in Congress that are supposed to, you know, like do the will of the people basically. But I think it would be cool to take it a step further and people like with kids, they could put their money towards schools. And then like when people really had to choose like, okay, and if this is just like an idea and it wouldn't work and probably it would just create more steps for people. And so they might not even want to do it. But I think that would be like a cool way to like handle taxes. Say, yeah, please use my money for this. Or like, no, I don't want my money to go for that. But it just, you know, I'm glad if people have any of their debt forgiven. And I think some of the problem is like, okay, here's a story that I didn't tell yesterday because I know a lot of you are, you come back again. And so I want the live to be different. I had a friend, I dated him um, for a while, but he's still a friend. And he was like 36 when I met him, right? And he did go to like a four year university and he like there's, there's some rule for his student loans where like, if he continued to stay in college, that the loans didn't start, you didn't have to repay them. So like he would take like one community college class, like every semester that he didn't even need to take so that he wouldn't have to start repaying the student loans. And the reason why is like a lot of times, like people can't afford to pay them back. And so they wind up paying like almost double the original amount of the loan. And that's, you know, not ideal, right? Like that's basically like there's predatory lending where they're not telling people how much it'll really cost them in the long run. And the kids are so young, you know, like a lot of us still don't like, there's still like, I'm good with money, but there's still some things in the stock market that I don't understand. Like, people short sell, right? And I don't, and they trade on margin. Like, and I don't know a lot of, and options and puts and calls. Like there's a lot of things that happen in the stock market 
that I'm not familiar with. I'm like a buy and hold kind of investor. Um, so there's still concepts about money that I, that I don't understand. And I think a lot of kids when they're 18, they're like me, they're maybe the first ones in their family to go to college or they, they come, they're the first generation to be born and raised here in America. And this is their first chance to go to college. And they're just so excited to go to college that they're not thinking about the loans. Also, I did tell this story last night. As I was growing up, like I really, really thought that you could work at any job, even McDonald's making minimum wage. And as long as you worked 40 hours a week, like you went five days a week, you put in your 40 hours, I thought it would be enough to pay for a two bedroom apartment, like for you and like kids or you and your husband and kids or whatever the situation is, a two bedroom apartment, a car payment, your utilities and have like money left over for school clothes and toys and whatever else, food. Um, and that's not the reality. And I think college is like that in the sense that they tell kids like, oh, you got to go to college. You got to get this education. And if you do, then you'll get a really good high paying job. But what they don't tell you is that it's really dependent on what you major in in school. Like, again, I referenced this story last night. I had a friend who majored in history. And really the only thing that you can do with history is you can be a history teacher or maybe you could write a history book. But if those two paths aren't really something that interests you, well, in today's market, there's a lot of things that you can do like creatively, like you could probably start a YouTube channel on history, but like probably most people are going to go like a more traditional path. They're either going to be a teacher or they're going to be, or they're going to try and write a book. Then is the book successful? Like there's just not a lot of viable career paths to actually make that money back. And I feel like the schools don't tell you that, you know, like if you want to mate, what do they say? If you want to major in like underwater basket weaving, like there's a class for that in college, but like, you're not going to make a lot of money doing underwater basket weaving. Um, I don't think that's a real class, but there certainly are like a lot of classes that unfortunately, like you can major in them, but they're not going to make a decent living when you, when you graduate. So it's really, really dependent on your major. And then there's just some schools. Um, ITT tech is one of them that came up in the stream last night and they're known for their predatory lending practices or like basically like promising things that they don't deliver. They're like, Oh, if you go to our school, you'll get this degree and it'll be great. And you'll make all this money. And then like the jobs aren't there. Uh, I also, I went to bartending school. There was a commercial, I think it was like Barbizon. Maybe that's for haircutting. But anyway, the commercial was like, D -d -d do it, be a bartender. Um, I did it for fun. Like I didn't expect that like I would make a living. I have funny stories to tell about that, but not tonight. Um, and they were like, yeah, we'll help you find job placement when you graduate. But bartending school is a sham. It was even 20 years ago when I went. Um, you don't find a bartending job like that. You find a bartending job by having a friend that works at a bar and then you go work at the bar also and you start washing dishes and then one day a bartender calls out sick and then boom, you're a bartender. Um, but they had a job board, but like there were so many of us in bartending school and then they would, the jobs that they were posting would be like really far or they would have like one job and there were a bunch of us. For me, it wasn't viable because I was already managing movie theaters. And so like bars are busy on Friday and Saturday nights. And I was working at the movie theater Friday and Saturday night. So no bar really wanted to hire me. I guess I am going to tell the story about the bartending. Um, I graduated like right before St. Patrick's Day. And like at the movie theater, people want to take holidays off bars are not the same. Everybody wants to work on the holidays on bars because people tip better. Um, so I, but I didn't know that. So I like went out, I took applications to bars, which really isn't the way you get a job at a bar. Um, but I took my little application. I was like, if you guys need extra help on St. Patrick's day, like I'll come help. I'll do anything. Like I'll wash the dishes. I just want to help because you know, blah, blah, blah. But like everybody wants to work on the holidays at bars, especially St. Patrick's day because of how good the tips are. Anyway, 
Hi, Josie. How are you? I'm good. My mom's good. Uh, we're maybe thinking about having her come out here again this weekend because I do have my little mini split air conditioner, but it's going to be like in the hundreds out here. Okay. Live your life. Set. You regret your business degree. You would have so little debt if it weren't for student loans. Um, well, hopefully you qualify for some of this student loan debt forgiveness. Um, and now if you do have to do like repayments of your student loans, it used to be that they would require like 10% of your discretionary spending to be repaid back or your discretionary income, basically your income after your housing expenses. But now they're lowering that amount down to 5%. So hopefully that helps you as well. Okay, Sonia says, you go to community college and you paid your way. You're not from here. You came here when you were 16. And where you're from, um, you have to pay school fee for high school and there's no loans. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I mean, here there's public schools and then there's private schools. I could never afford to go to a private school. I don't even think my mom looked at that for me. Um, but some schools here, even like for elementary school, I think you have to pay. And, you know, I, I wish that people understood what they were getting into when they're doing these loans. I, but I wish like for my audience that they understood like how much an auto loan can be and what it's really going to cost you over the life of the loan, you know? And I think a lot of people, they don't think about that. And that's what gets them into a bad situation. And yeah, I went to community college because like I knew I couldn't afford like a regular four-year university. Um, well, I mean, and like I graduated from continuation school. I don't even know if a real, real college would have taken me. Um, but if you guys are somebody, maybe you have grandkids or kids that are about to be college age, or maybe you're college age and you're watching, I would suggest doing your first two years of school in community college where it's cheaper and then using that two years and transferring over to a four-year university where it's going to be like a lot more money to actually get your degree. Okay, Rocky, if you wanted to register into college right now, would you be able to get loan forgiveness? No. So you would have needed to, ha to take out your loan prior to July 20th of this year. So, um, I haven't talked to my friend yet. She has a kid going to college. Um, and I wonder if her student loans were in place and if she's automatically going to have $10,000 forgiven. Also though, her mom makes a lot of money. So, like she, her mom might make more than the 125,000 to qualify for student loan forgiveness. I'm going to have to ask her. I don't know. Um, that helps 5%. Yeah, 5% of your discretionary income instead of 10%. So yeah, the amount you have to repay on your loans if your loan repayment is income-based is dropping down. It should be about half of what it was. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, Megan is correct. Um, if you take out a loan right now, it would not be forgiven. Autism matters. When am I doing a meet and greet? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that many people would come. Um, anyway, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So new loans would not be eligible. Uh oh, autism matters. This isn't that kind of channel. Anyway, um, yeah, let me know if you guys have any other questions about the student loan debt forgiveness. Megan, I haven't seen you in here before. So hello. Um, hopefully you'll benefit from this. And again, Sonia, a lot of people feel like, like you do, you know, it's, it's, and kind of my initial reaction is like, oh, it's not fair, but like, I'm really, really trying not to look at life like that. Right. I think negative attracts negative. I want to be happy for people. If this helps people in some way, then I like it. Will it perhaps cause higher taxes? Maybe. But again, like, you know, the government's just kind of reshuffling the money anyway. Okay. Dahlberg. Hi. If you're not a student, can you apply for it? And when is the application starting? So if you've graduated, like if you're not in school right now, but you were in school and you're repaying student loans, then yes. The only thing that I've really seen that's happening in terms of people who are not in school right now, but want to go to school 
is they're supposed to be much more transparent about like, and basically they're going to audit the different lenders and see who's on the up and up. They're going to audit schools like ITT Tech that have like over promised what type of job someone might get when they graduate and kind of go from there. Um, so just kind of more, more monitoring to make sure that these predatory loan, uh, these predatory loans aren't given out and that if they are, that people like really are aware of what they're signing when they sign up. Um, all right, Karina, a meet and greet. Well, we'll have to figure that out. Oh, no, no, no. Autism matters. You're extra naughty tonight. You're not normally naughty. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah. Go to community college first. That's going to be better economically to go to do two years of community college. Also, that gives you that gives you time before classes cost a lot of money to like try and maybe figure out what you really want to do. And I would also recommend like, okay, some trade schools are actually going to be eligible for this program too, depending on like what type of loan you have. If it's a federal approved loan, then perhaps some of your trade school loans like beauty school or um, electrician school or something like that could potentially be forgiven as well. But I think trades like plumbing, air conditioning, electricians, construction, all of those types of jobs pay really well. And there's no shame in doing a job that's that's hard labor, you know, or that like requires special training and special skills. Um, you guys know I watch Meet Kevin's channel a lot and that's something that he always um, recommends like all through the pandemic when everything else was closed, plumbers were still in business, construction was still in business. Um, those kinds of jobs last. Okay, so Rocky says, is it better to go to community college versus trade school? Okay, so again, this is just my opinion. I would actually, it, de it depends on what you're looking for, right? If, honestly, I think trade school would be a better idea for almost everyone. Because the trade schools, maybe, maybe not beauty school, but like plumbers, electricians, HVAC or air conditioning people, perhaps like truck drivers. I think there's school for truck drivers. Um, those kinds of jobs are always in demand and they pay pretty well versus if I go to community college, right? And I, I did this. I also, I went back as an adult just to take, I was paying like a lot to go to yoga for a while. And I realized that it would be cheaper to just pay the enrollment fee and then the unit fee to go to community college. And I took yoga at community college as an adult. I took ballet. Obviously, guys, I'm not, shocker, I'm not going to be a ballerina. I'm sorry if I disappointed anybody with that news, but despite my like little girl dreams, I am, it's not... So, you know, there's lots of classes in community college that you can kind of do more for fun. Like, you know, your parents want you to go, go to college, but you could, you could fill your entire college course schedule with like yoga, ballet, painting, and some people that really want it will make it work and they'll make careers out of, out of those fields. But I would say like, if you're really going to join like a ballet company or something like that, and you're just getting started in community college, it's not, it can't happen, but you would have to work much, much harder. And for the majority of those people, if they're like, oh, I want to grow up and be a ballerina and you're starting at 18, it would be very difficult for that to work out. Not impossible, but very, very, very difficult. So I would actually, I would probably recommend trade school. Because if you go to trade school, that means you've decided, okay, I'm going to be a plumber because it makes good money. Or I can open, I can open my own plumbing company. I can open my own construction company, something like that. And those are never going to go out of business ever, you know? Okay. So live your life. You wish that you did community college for your AA and then go to university. Yeah. So basically if you go to community college, it can more or less that, you know, and then they call other colleges like four-year colleges. They're more traditional colleges. 
So if you're getting your bachelor, like if you go to a four-year college, you can't get your AA. You can't get a, an AA is a two-year degree and associate in arts is what that stands for. So if you go to a community college, you get your AA and then you can use the credits that you took in community college to transfer over to a four-year university. I will also say, and I started to talk about this last night, I wanted to go into astrophysics. And I actually got to the point, like I had good grades, I not great grades, but good grades. I had a G, I, I don't know, I've graduated college, community college with highest honors. No, high honors, not highest honors, sorry. Um, but I sat down with like a representative from UCLA and you don't always know this either, but so I already had my AA, but I was just staying in school. Honestly, I think because I was on the Pell Grant, so I was still like getting money. So I was like, why not like still take classes? And then while I was taking those classes, that's where I was like, okay, I want to do this. But when I sat down with that college counselor, from UCLA, she was like, one, even though I had highest, I had high honors, she was like, you still need to get your GPA up. She was like, and you need to have, like, I I fulfilled my, I fulfilled my requirements to get my AA, but like, you could take a logic class to count as a math class. And basically, she was like, you need before you transfer to UCLA, before like UCLA would really, before you would be like a serious candidate to be accepted into UCLA or Stanford or any of those schools that have like good astrophysics programs, um, I would have needed to finish calculus and I hadn't had any calculus. <clears throat> I think I did trigonometry um, but not calculus. So I, and there's like calculus one and calculus two. So I was going to need to get those done. I think I did, I did astronomy one and astronomy two, which counts towards your physics classes, but they wanted to see more physics classes. So basically there were going to be all these classes that I still had to take at community college before I would have been a serious candidate to qualify to transfer to UCLA. And right at that same time where I was looking at transferring, I got offered a management position at my old company and I took it because I was like, well, that's guaranteed money. Anyway, um, community college though is a good way to go, especially if you don't know what you're gonna do because you can knock off two years of school, get your general requirements taken care of, and then use those credits to transfer into a four-year college. Um, yeah, plumbing is a great job. Okay, live your life. Says trade school is better. Like those jobs that I'm mentioning, uh, what people need. Those jobs start, start at 100K an hour. Or not an hour. <laughs> Probably with inflation, they're going up to 100K an hour. Um, not really. But so... 100k a year. Yeah. And like, that's in like any city, like, you know, I'm based here in California. So a lot of you are from California, but yeah, that's like 100k in like smaller towns as well. Plumbers make really good money. Like think about what it costs to call a plumber to your house, right? Even like the affordable plumber, it is $99 to come out sometimes for like less than an hour. So yeah, really good money if you're a plumber. Okay. Excuse me. Marlene says, you went to a court reporting school, like private trade school. Worst mistake of my life. Wish you would have taken it as city college. Yeah. Okay. Rocky says, that's good to know. Ready for the world says, if you were starting now, community college have trade skills, trade school skills, HVAC, air conditioning, et cetera. Next generation of AC is happening. How about... 100,000 out of the gate at age 23. Yeah, yeah, like, like seriously. So most trade schools, maybe, maybe not beauty school. I don't know. I'm, I don't know what um, beauticians make, but, but like HVAC, electricians, plumbers, construction workers making good money right out of the gate, right out of college, right after you get your certificate. A lot of times I, I do tend to think, that like a lot of people get into that through friends and family as well. And I think like maybe like 
I had two uh, former coworkers and like they're now doing construction. And the one originally didn't know anything about construction, but like his friend brought him onto the construction site and like he helped. And um, now he's going to like get his official, I don't know if it's a degree or certification or whatever it is, but originally like a friend got him in. Suho says, can I talk about California stimulus? Why does it take so long to get $350? October, why does it take so long? Obviously, Newsom is trying to buy votes again. You know, I don't really know why it's going to take so long again. But yeah, the California stimulus, known as the middle class income tax refund, they're, and they're only going to start to go out in October. They're going to continue to go out through January of 2023. And if this is anything like last time, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, if that's when the direct deposits maybe go out in batches, like, and then the ones that are being mailed, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they extend that timeline. So I don't know why, but yeah, October will be the earliest. And it's, you know, they've, they've said up to, that's everyone's favorite phrase, up to $1,050. But yeah, I'm single. I don't have kids. It's going to be $350 for me. Okay. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I need some water. You guys know what that means. Please take a moment and like the video. I, mean, I should ask that too. S wants to know, did Marlene end up working as a court reporter? BMP, you went to Santa Monica College, then Cal State, uh, Cal State, that would be USC, right? Or Cal State, Cal State, you, oh, Cal, no, that's the different one. Cal State University of Los Angeles, that's the one that's off the 10 freeway. And then USC is closer to the 60, is that right? Anyway, for your bachelor's, you're now completing your master's at UCLA. You highly encourage engineering majors. Yep, that's a good degree that will pay right out of school. The salary you earn now helped you pay off your loans in three years. That is awesome. Engineering is a good job. It's a good career. And you might think, like, well, Shelly, you could do that because, like, I liked physics and everything. But engineering is a little bit different, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, but, like, engineering sometimes goes hand in hand with like architecture, but like you build stuff. You could build like a building or like a freeway. Also, some, sorry if this is boring to you guys, but I didn't realize this until I started taking calculus, right? People are like, when are you ever going to use that math? When are you going to use this? When are you going to use that? You don't like, it's so weird because they don't teach you calculus until like you're really old, right? We use math in everything. Those curves that you on a freeway off ramp, math, you got to use math to figure out what speed you can go down, what angle to put that curve at. Uh, you need math to figure out like, you know, like those cement pillars underneath the freeway, like you got to figure out like the weight distribution on that, even when it comes to taking medicine, right? I'm a heavier person. That might mean if I go to the hospital, I need a higher dose of medicine than someone that weighs half of what I may weigh or like what a baby weighs. And so you have to do that based on math, like weight and dose, you know, like it's interesting, like math is really everywhere. So anything that has to do with math, like math does come up in our lives. We just don't like think about it in that way, but math is used in a lot of things. Anyway, that's really math heavy. And I did start, even though like I am good at math, and I loved calculus because I was like, oh my God, this is what all this like stupid math is for. Um, I was like, I get it. The freeway curve, the amount of medicine each person gets and how it's different. But it was really hard. Um, and there is a lot of math required in being an engineer. Uh-oh, take a nap. Nope. No, <laughs> that's a nope, <laughs> not a nap. Um, no, you did not become a court reporter. I'm glad to see me streaming. And yeah, I'm back to going live every Sunday at 11 a.m. and Monday at 9 p.m. And it's because I'm not working a traditional job right now. So that means I need to get off my tukus and make some actual videos again as well. Um, do, yes, Joey, do delinquent loans qualify and how to tell if you had a Pell Grant? Pell grant. Um, that's the title of tonight's video topic. So 
Delinquent loans or loans that are in collections would potentially qualify, but you need to sign up for a different program called, do, 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 do. I have like three pages of notes on this, called the Fresh Start Program. So I do have a link in the description down below that will tell you more information about the Fresh Start program. Basically, you need to get your loans going again. And remember that repayment is paused right now um, until January of 2023. But, and they're going to work with people, it sounds like, through the Fresh Start program and like making the payments manageable and things. But you do need to like consolidate your loans get on a repayment plan and then the debt relief can and loan forgiveness could apply. So you're going to want to check out the fresh start program and then to find out if you had a Pell grant. So you're going to go to that studentaid.gov website and that's AID, not AIDE, um, studentaid.gov. And then from there, there's going to be like, and I just dropped the link in the chat again. And from there, you're going to want to go to, like, you can log in to your account, your SFA account, your, your student SAF. Do I have my initials wrong in that? No, SFA, student financial aid account on the studentaid.gov website. And guys, I also want to take this time to caution you, make sure that you're going to like an official website. Don't give information to anybody that contacts you. I'm sure that there's going to be like sketchy people that try to get information out of you. Like, as a matter of fact, like, so everybody always like makes jokes about the, we're calling you about your car's extended warranty. I get calls that are like, are your student loans delinquent? get current now. And I'm like, I don't have student loans. <laughs> so um, just please be cautious. Um, it's better like if you reach out than if somebody randomly reaches out to you. So I just want to put that out there. Um, anyway, so how to tell if you had a Pell grant, you're going to go to that studentaid.gov website. You're going to log in. If you forgot your login information, it's going to be a prompt to reset your password and your information. Um, and then you're going to go to my aid. There's going to be like a my aid section once you've logged in. And then from there, you can tell if you ever received a Pell grant. All right. Uh, Suho, you're welcome. Um, Marlene says, after five years of trying, you're done. Private schooling for court reporting is way too expensive. I'm sorry about that, but I'm glad you tried. Okay. Joey says loans and default. Yes. Okay. So we just got to that. Hopefully you stuck around. So yeah, you're going to look into the program called Fresh Start. Why can't I remember that? I need to put that up like on my board so I don't have to like look through my notes every time. But the Fresh Start program and let, there's a nerd wallet article that I've linked down below. Um, so check that out. It's in the video description. Also exciting news since you guys said you wanted some updates from me. You guys know that I talk about auto loan refinancing especially because people are like on my default on my auto loans and they're like what else do they tell me? that their car payments are too high. And then all the videos are right now are like, cars are going to be repossessed. There's an auto loan bubble, predatory lending on auto, auto loans. Oh, Sonia, remind me, I want to say something um, about predatory lending again in a second and being bitter about people getting the loan forgiveness. Um, but Graham Stefan tweeted something today about the auto loan bubble. And I was and I, like, because Graham has a much bigger audience than I do, right? And I, so I was just like, Graham, please let people know to try refinancing their auto loan with a credit union, like before they get behind on their payments, because credit unions traditionally have a really low um, interest rate on their auto loans. So either you could lower your payment and pay off your car in the same amount of time, or you could keep your payment the same, but pay off your car faster. Like, so 
if anybody needs information on refinancing their auto loan, try doing it with a credit union. And the credit union that I like, I recommend them anyway, but shh, don't tell them that, is First Entertainment Credit Union. You do not need to be a member of the entertainment industry in order to um, get your loan through First Entertainment Credit Union. Anyway, so they commented back on my tweet telling Graham to make a video on that. And then I reached out to them to see if they would like officially sponsor a video, even though I'm still going to recommend them, even if they say no. And then if I, if they sponsor a video, then like I would get a little extra something, something for making the video. Anyway, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hi King. Good to see you too. Okay. Marlene says you might be able to work in closed captioning though. Oh, that, that would be really cool. I had a friend that did that. Um, that's a cool job. Hi, KAFLA TV. Um, good to see you as well. Okay. King, uh, you would marry me no matter what. Well, thank you. I'm going to take you up on that. You look younger than me, though. Uh, not that that's a bad thing. <laughs> uh, also, I look like a straight up bum right now. So really, thank you. <laughs> also, I see that Debbie isn't in here, but I know that she's going to watch later. I don't know if she's going to watch all the way to the end. So number one, but the green guy, even though he's happy about loan forgiveness, he's going to be sad that Debbie's not in here. You know why? Because, we, you know, you know what Debbie said? She said, Shelly, you're competing against the finale of The Bachelorette today. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. We could have rescheduled. Anyway, Debbie, if you're <laughs> watching later, hello. I'm not from, I haven't watched The Bachelorette, but I hope whoever you're rooting for wins. <laughs> okay, um, Ready for the World says, oh my God, it's all lining up for Newsom versus DeSantis for the main event. The 20 billion UIEDD scandal is going to be a possible Hulu Amazon Prime docudrama. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> we'll see. Me and Jenny Silver, right? Okay. Uh, Joey says, how do you look up your default loans, both Pell and federal loan? regular. You have about 20 grand. You still owe your payments are at a pawn shop, I think. So try going to studentaid.gov. Then on the right where the login information is on most websites, um, there's a login page. If you don't remember your login, you'll hit like, I forgot my password or whatever. You'll reset your password. And then from there, it should show up. Um, so I hope that works for you. That should work now. And guys, I should have also said this earlier. Apparently that website's crashing a little bit, um, but try not to worry about that too much. Okay. Joey says, you think they were turned over to collections? So you do have to get them current again and again through that fresh start um, program. Do I remember when they sold the loans to private collectors? I, I don't. Be, you know, I'm old too. I'm 45. Um, but it would be also, well, I don't know if this would apply to you. If you owe less than $12,000 on your student loans and you've been faithfully making payments for 10 years, they're going to just like forgive the rest of it basically. And I guess they used to do that, but it was over a 20 year time span. So people just felt like, oh, I'm never going to pay that off. Um, uh, but now the time frame is different. So if you've been making payments for 10 years consecutively and you owe less than 12,000, that's when they would potentially forgive the whole loan. Also, if you had like a PSLF, which is a public service loan, then there would potentially be forgiveness for that also. Oh, you're 40. I'm 45. All right. Well then, yeah, that could work. All right. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Hopefully that website works for you. Okay. Marlene, Senator Marco Rubio said he was able to pay off his loans by writing a book. Yeah. So, okay. Here's the thing though, right? I'm not good at writing a book. I don't know if you were in here earlier. I had a friend who was a history major. And basically, if you have a history degree, there's two choices where you could potentially make money. And it's not great money, right? Like teachers are vastly underpaid. But you can teach history or you can teach, most likely. Or you can write a book. But... Not everybody that writes a book is going to make enough to pay off their loans. That's kind of what I tend to think about that. Um, 
Yeah, you're welcome, Joey. And welcome because I haven't seen you ever on the channel before either. So welcome if you're new. I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad to answer your questions about the student loan forgiveness, um, middle class income tax refund in the state of California, unemployment benefits, mostly in the state of California, but I know a little bit about some of the other states. I love talking finance. That's why I've got my Weeble shirt on. So if you haven't yet, I think they're giving out six free stocks right now. Um, and I've got that link in the description down below. Also, I'm probably going to wear this as a pajama shirt because I'm probably going to sleep right after this live. <laughs> uh, hi, DoorDash Rick. Okay, Suho says, had several payday... Oh, Suho. Oh, no. I read the word payday loan. Those are really predatory loans. You had to change your bank account number with Chase. It was the only solution. They sell it to collections. And collections can't reduce your credit since they don't owe the don't own the loan. I'm so sorry about that. That has happened to people that I know. Like they're not like my close immediate friends or family, but it's a, it's a coworker. And if you guys have heard me talk about my my old coworkers, even the new ones from the job that I'm not at. Like they're like family, right? I'm always going to look out for them. And one of my coworkers was just the sweetest and he took out those payday loans. Those are so bad. Please never, never, never. I, you know, just try and avoid them if you can, because they, they are really bad and they get a lot of people in trouble. But I understand that people take those out because they're in trouble. But like, Honestly, anything else. If you can sell items, rings, jewelry at a pawn shop, if you can sell old clothes on eBay, sometimes old dishes, like old instruments that maybe you played in high school or elementary school, if you have old toys, try and try and get the money literally any other way besides a payday loan. Um, because yeah, the interest rates are so high on those. And this is kind of what, what happened with student loans. And Sonia, if you're still in, I have a comment again, I'll, I'm going to say it right after I say this to Suho. Um, sometimes there, if your credit score is not bad yet, like if you just know that you're going to have something come up and you're worried about it, again, that's when you want to refinance like your car payment with a, with a credit union, like first entertainment credit union. Um, that is when, if you get like those 0% credit card offers, that's when you would want to take one of those as opposed to a payday loan. That's when you would potentially want to open up. And I, if you're in such a, a troubled spot that you need to take out a payday loan. Your credit might already not be great, so this might not be not work. And I I don't want people to get in credit card debt. But opening a new credit card, if you think you're going to get back on your feet quickly, in my opinion, would be a better option than those payday loans. But just literally anything, ex anything except those payday loans. Um, mow people's yards. There's that dog walking site Rover, like, Oh God, it just breaks my heart. It does. And like for my coworker and we're close, like we still, we're close ish. Like we keep in touch. Like I know he's moving to Arizona and he's going to manage a movie theater and he's super excited about it. And he did like some catering and banquet events after the pandemic and he's doing great. Like, and I'm probably always going to keep in touch with him. I'll probably be like a friend that I text happy birthday on years when I remember um, or like leave a comment on his Facebook or whatever. We're checking with him like, you know, once every other year and say, Hey, how are you doing? But like, I'll always keep in touch with him. So like, I, you know, like a good acquaintance, I guess. I don't know. I think of them all like family, but not in like a toxic work environment way. And like, I'll, I'll always have your back friend kind of way. He didn't, he didn't know what he was getting into. And he had to file bankruptcy. <sighs> okay. Joey says they can't intimidate you though. But like sometimes the calls alone just cause like so much. Even Okay. So even when I was getting those calls about like your student loans are past due. And I was like, I don't have student loans. Like those are stressful, right? And I can only imagine like as your brain starts to get a little foggier as you get older, like that can be really scary. All right. 
Okay. King, thanks to me, you actually got your EDD in July and you didn't expect so much. Also, my finger is like not working right. It's like, it doesn't want to bend. It feels stiff. I have arthritis. I don't know what's going on with me. Ah, stress probably. Also, there are these bugs and I got like one somehow got in my house and it bit me like four times and it's not a mosquito. I didn't see it coming. It's terrible and it's super itchy and I'm annoyed. But anyway, so I got to find that bug. Okay, DoorDash Rick says, Suho, sign up for Door. Oh yeah, DoorDash. Some people don't have a car though. I will say one time before the pandemic and I will never do this again. I don't, well, I'll never say never, but I had a roommate that stayed in this blue room before the blue room became my YouTube studio. I rented this out, not for very much money. It's very little square feet. I could practically like reach across and like be touching the other wall. No, it's probably like one and a half lengths to the other wall. A bed fits in here and a desk, but not much else. Anyway, whatever. I rented it for like $300 to like a friend in need, an acquaintance in need. He was like, I'm gonna, my friend that somebody bought my apartment i'm getting kicked out you have that extra room can i come stay with you and at the time this was during when i was living in san diego so i said yes and he only drove his bike rode his bike you don't drive do you drive a bike i don't know whatever he only rode his bike and there is a food delivery service program called caviar c-a-v-i-a whatever, however you spell C-A-V-I-E-R, caviar, um, like, like caviar, like you would eat. Anyway, he delivered food on his bike, uh, but he was in really good shape and he like rode his bike everywhere, like a weirdo. But anyway, <laughs> he wasn't weird. Well, he was weird, but for other reasons. Okay. Anyway, um, pay, yeah, paid it. How, how are those allowed to like be in business? Okay. If Sonia is still in here, and I think she popped out, but also again, you know, something that I got from somebody that I watched on TikTok, instead of begrudging people what they got and being like, well, that's not fair. You know, they got, they're getting student loan forgiveness. I also want to say that there were plenty of people when we were on unemployment saying, well, that's not fair. I have to work through the pandemic and they just get to sit home and collect unemployment. It's, and I think this is like something that we need to work on, right? Or something that I need to work on. You do you. But we really have to try and see the world outside of just what's happening to us. It's so easy to say, well, I didn't have student loans, so I don't, where's my $10,000? But it was equally easy for people who weren't furloughed, laid off, permanently let go during the pandemic to say, it's not fair. I have to go to work every day. Why do they get to sit home and collect unemployment benefits? This is a theme that came up when I first started talking about unemployment, because a lot of people were like, well, they're making more on unemployment they, than they were when they were working. And yes, that was true for a lot of people, almost even for me, because I didn't have like 401k contributions. I didn't have health insurance that I had to pay for. Um, but that money that we got on unemployment, the extra money, that was to encourage us to stay home. So if that meant that people would stay home to protect others, but they bought a PlayStation, but if that's what it, if that's what it took to like keep people at home, like then then awesome, <laughs> you know? Like it's so easy to look at someone else and say they don't deserve that because I don't have it. But I really think that comparison is the thief of joy. Like you can't, you, well, again, not telling you guys how to live your life, but something that I realized way too late in life, because I did feel like that for a long time. It's not fair. They had rich parents. It's not fair. They had two parents. It's not fair. X, Y, and Z. There, well, there's always going to be something that we can look at somebody else and we don't even necessarily know their whole situation and say it's not fair because X, Y, and Z. So what the TikToker that I watch under the desk news said was, okay, so what do you need? What, what can we forgive? Do you, and someone yesterday in the chat, they were like, how about they forgive $10,000 on a new car? Yeah, that seems like a good idea to me. How about they limit car payments to no more than 5% of your discretionary income? And then 
It's our job to band together and endlessly tell our politicians, what if we want to get rid of payday loans? I think that's a good one. Or we want to forgive all payday loan debt. Then we have to start contacting our government and those payday loan money pits that they can't forgive. Regulation, sorry, excuse me, my esophagus is making noise. Anyway, we need to be like, hey, regulate those payday loans. And I believe that they are starting to regulate those a little bit more. Um, but yeah, maybe we need payday loan forgiveness. Maybe we need $10,000 off of a vehicle, not just uh, 7500 if you buy an electric vehicle that are, that's really expensive. Maybe it's if I was responsible and I bought a used car for 10 grand, used Honda Civic, used Toyota Corolla, used reliable car, 10 grand off. But we need to band together and, and get each other what we need. And we need to put pressure on our government to help give us those things. Oh, a dog hotel. So you can work at a dog hotel and like babysit dogs. Um, I'm, you had several, they made a lot of money off you. And there was someone at Chase that helped you counsel your bank account and the problem was solved. I'm so, I'm sorry that you went through that, but I'm so grateful to the person at Chase that helped you get out of that situation. Um, DoorDash owns caviar. Thank you. C-A-V-I-A-R. Thank you. Thank God this is not Shelly's spelling channel. Guys, at my old job, here's the beauty of working somewhere <laughs> for 25 years. Um, I'm not a great speller, but like mm, the computer will tell you when you're spelling things <laughs> wrong these days. So like, I don't really worry about it. But as I knew I was going to start to look for other jobs, I was like, I should work on my spelling because I'm self-conscious about it, right? And I read a lot. I don't know. Maybe this is like something to do with how like I have trouble pronouncing like pen and pin. But anyway, not about, I'm not a good speller. I, I, I was like, oh, I want to work on a yacht. And then I realized I couldn't spell yacht. I can now. It's Y-A-C-H-T. But anyway, so I started, there's a whiteboard at work. Like, you know, like one of these guys, but like big for work. And I started writing all the words that I couldn't spell and I would make a sentence. And like each day I was trying to learn like a new word. And so I would change the sentence on there. And my boss would be like, what is that? And I was like, those are all the words that I can't spell that I'm making. <laughs> like he was just like, what is this? And I was like, oh, it's my spelling list. Um, and, then, and therein lies the beauty of working the same job for 25 years where everybody's a little bit like family. Self-improvement on my break time. Uh, also couldn't spell broccoli. I kept trying to put an H in it. There's no H in broccoli. I also couldn't spell emperor, but I can now. So, and the sentence was something to the effect of the emperor does not like to eat broccoli on his yacht. Also, I don't know why I was trying to spell any of those things except the yacht. Because I think I was trying to tell somebody that I wanted a sugar daddy to like support me and let me live on his yacht. Anyway. Sorry, guys. You guys know that the Monday night ones, the lives are a little bit like loosey-goosey because I'm getting tired. So I say weird stuff. Because you guys are like my work family too. <laughs> okay. Suho says, for lots of people, student loans are not the reason they're struggling. There are many options such as forbearance and deferment. Loan forgiveness is not the answer. Hurry up with that 350 The 350 though, you know, I'm, I'm going to be grateful for it. But I think we could have done better. I think gas prices, toilet paper, groceries, all of the basic necessities are so expensive right now that $350 one time isn't going to do much for most people. If you go to the right place, though, that could potentially buy you a new set of car tires. You could take do maintenance on your car. Maybe, maybe if you're lucky, that's one car payment. When I got my car, and you guys know I refinanced three times, First Entertainment Credit Union, love them. Try and refinance your car if you're struggling with car payments. But I was watching a TikTok today. Surprise, surprise. I watch too much TikTok in case you have can't tell. There was one of those ones where they go around the office and they ask people, what's your loan? What's your auto loan payment? People were saying like $1,400. Guys, please do not be paying. Like that's that's too much a month for a car payment in my opinion. Anyway, and $350 enough for stimulus is one time is not really enough either. And then let's just talk about inflation for one moment and the stimulus and like the 
Fed raising interest rates. Where that really affects people, the Fed raising interest rates, where that's going to affect most of my audience, most of my friends, most of my family is on those credit card payments. I know so many people who only pay the minimum payment on their credit card, or maybe they pay like $5 above the minimum. They're not able to pay off those credit card balances every month. And really, that's the only way you should be using credit or that I would, you know, that that's how I use credit. I try and pay off the balance in full every month, but, but a lot of people can't. And when the Fed raises interest rates, that ties into your credit card payment. So your credit card payment, even if you don't purchase anything new, the minimum payment can go up just because the Fed has raised interest rates. And they're doing that so that then people spend less money and like, yeah, that's going to work. But it's not like the stores are discounting groceries, gas, and toilet paper. The stores are discounting basically where we would have our discretionary income, like maybe jewelry or maybe clothes. But like the clothes have been sitting in a shipping container in a warehouse, so they might not even be like in fashion right now. Like it's not, it's stuff that we can do without. Where we need the government to like put a stop to the rising cost is on gas, groceries, gas, groceries, toilet paper, like basic necessities. And they know people have to buy those things. So that's not where the sales are. The economy's real messed up right now. Sucks. (laughs) Ah, just had to say that. Okay. So, oh, thank you, Marlene, for saying that. I appreciate that. Um, Yeah. Oh, thank you, King, for reminding everybody. You're King. Thank you um, for reminding everybody to, let's see if I can make a a crown comment for you. Um, I dropped that in the chat. Thank you for reminding everybody to hit the like button. We are at the hour mark. So I'm probably going to hop off really soon unless anybody has any other questions right now. Um, Marlene, you used to do typing tests for speed and spelling practice. What I said is very relatable. Um, this is one more rando story and then I'm going to hop off for the night. In continuation high school, there was a typing program and I believe it was called like Miss Mavis typing. And it was really good. You'd be like, A A A B B B, And it taught you how to type without looking. But for some reason, like I went through most of the class and then I didn't learn the numbers because I guess the numbers are last. So I can type without looking until like I need to do like the year, and then I have to look down. Also, because of the spelling, like I'll know when a word is spelled wrong, but um, sometimes I spell it so bad that like the computer doesn't know what the heck I'm trying to say. A lot of times when I'm trying to spell inconvenience, it will spell incontinence instead. Like, I don't know how I'm spelling it that poorly, but anyway, um, I don't, now I've lost my train of thought, probably because it's towards the end of the night. So you could, you could maybe tutor typing. You could make like, I don't know. I think I'm going to look into making like free digital products as a side hustle. I don't know. But you could make like little typing worksheets. Like, do you remember, did they do this to you? Like, did they, like you would, it would be on screen and like you would just mimic it and it would tell you anyway, whatever. I liked typing but I stopped at the numbers. So I have to look down to do those. So I cannot be a reporter. (laughs) Suho, it's obvious why Newsom is giving stimulus right before an election. Really it's different this time because he has no competition. Yeah. Oh, um, Instagram is probably the best way to reach me. Um, and it's just Shelly's underscore millions. Let me see. I always forget. I forget my own Instagram because I'm not super active on Instagram. Yeah. Shelly's underscore millions. This is me on Instagram. That's what my profile looks like. I don't post very much on Instagram, but yeah, shoot me a DM on Instagram or, oh my God, I always forget this. I have my, (laughs) I have my own website now. Um, Shelly at Shelly's millions dot com. And that'd be all one word. So either on Instagram. So this is my email or my Instagram is Shelly's, with no apostrophe, millions. Those are both good ways to like shoot me an email. 
Um, if for some reason the Shelly at Shelly's millions doesn't work, I also have Shelly's billions. All the millions was taken at gmail.com. But hey, why not? Maybe we'll be Shelly's billions. That would be amazing. Uh, anyway. Okay. Live your life. Whatever you're good at, you can make money. Yes. And this is why I'm struggling. Like, do I go and find a traditional job? which I think I'm leaning towards because I just have to be honest about who I am. Um, I, um, Joey, I'm going to get to your comment next. I think I'm the type of person that I do better when I have to be somewhere else at a certain time. Like I, and I'm going to put this in the universe too. When, when you guys talk to yourselves, I would love to see you say things like, I'm not good at X, Y, and Z yet. Um, rather than just being like, oh, I'm not good at that. I'm not good at that yet because practice makes perfect. But I feel like I'm not good at managing my own time yet. I'm really, I talked about this on last night's live. I procrastinate. Like I have a bunch of videos filmed. I filmed one with my mom. It's going to be great. Um, but... I procrastinated so much. I was like, oh, I haven't washed those pillows in a while. I need to Google how to like make my pillows white. And then I was like, oh, those white tennis shoes, those are dirty. These Converse have been dirty for like five years. For five years, I was like, eh, whatever, just wear dirty white Converse. No big deal. Until yesterday, I was like, oh, I need to like soak my tennis shoes in OxyClean. Like, no, I didn't need to do that. I need to set my butt in front of a computer and film a video, but I didn't do that. Okay, Joey says... Petty compared to what the wealth distribution is in our country, so vote. Um, come on, the top 1% of households in the United States held 32.3% of the country's wealth, while the bottom 50% held 2.6%. And again, I love numbers. Um, so um, I love that you put those numbers out. And yeah, there's another thing on the fair, not fair topic of the $10,000 or $20,000 student loan forgiveness. Joey, fingers crossed that your loans will be forgiven because you said that you think that you were a Pell Grant recipient. Um, so I'm hoping that you are, and I'm hoping that that takes care of most of that for you and that you're able to get everything all taken care of. Um, but PPP loans, I, I just found out do you want to find out if the company that you work for took out a PPP loan? That is public information. But you might need to look use the name where you like of your paycheck. Um, because sometimes, like, I don't know. When I worked for my old company, it had like one name on the outside of the business, but then it had another name like on our actual paycheck. So you might need to like search for the name that's on your paycheck, not the name that's like on the outside of the business building. But like, I was really surprised by the number of companies, like giant corporations. Oh, I have to talk about this for a second. You could be a billionaire, billionaire with a B, not millionaire with an M, billionaire with a B. And, and billionaires often have multiple companies. So let's say that I'm a billionaire and I own Chili's, right? The restaurant chain or Cheesecake Factory or whatever. Let's say I own a Chili's and a Cheesecake Factory, as a matter of fact. That'll make my example way easier. I could apply for PPP loans for Chili's and Cheesecake Factory, even if I'm a billionaire. I could have been approved for both of those. And then, like, as long as you spent the PPP money in an appropriate manner, like for rent, utilities to keep people on payroll, any computer software that you needed to operate your business. You couldn't use it for new equipment, but like to pay existing bills, existing rent, existing employees, yada, yada, yada. Those PPP loans, they're forgiven. You don't have to repay them as long as the funds were spent appropriately. And on the website where it's got like the public information, let's just say that you're curious and you want to know like what companies received the most money in PPP loans you can sort it by like companies that receive the most money in PPP loans. And there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe not hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, but there are plenty of companies that got $10 million and they're just going to have it all forgiven. So if you want to be mad about something, be mad about that. Because if you're a billionaire, one, 
you could probably afford to like be closed for a year. Two, like it takes 999 million. And then that next million is what makes you a billionaire. 999 million. No one needs that much money. No one to, to, ha to be a billionaire, right? That's crazy. So they're, but if they had a business and they applied for, and I might have my information a little bit wrong on that, but I, Joey, you seem like you're pretty knowledgeable on this. Like, I'm pretty sure that that's how it worked. Multiple business, multiple, so you could get a different PPP loan for each of your businesses up to $10 million, totally forgiven. And it's possible, it's totally possible that these billionaires have like five businesses. Maybe they applied for PPP loans for like two of them, even though the other three were still making money. It's just completely crazy, completely crazy. So if you guys want to be mad about something, like let's be mad about all the tax cuts for corporations. Because in the grand scheme of things, like the $10,000, the up to $10,000, because also if you owe less than $10,000, then they're just going to forgive that amount of the loan. They're not going to send you anything extra. So some people won't even like get a full $10,000. I, I had somebody tell me that they were down to their last $1,200 of their student loan. So as long as that's federal money, um, then that would be, then that would be forgiven, but there wouldn't be extra. Ugh. Anyway, I hate that. Okay. All right. Suho says, uh, you shouldn't ask for people's phone number or email on YouTube. That's fishing. Um, but I, but I guess like I'm sort of a public figure. So it's, that's not like my private email. It's like my business email. So I'm cool giving that out, but thank you. Thank you, Suho. Uh, Suho is just looking out for me. Okay. PPP loans were Trump's fault. And that's why he's not president because he didn't handle the pandemic well. Okay. And Joey, you might not like this. I'm going to, I'm not going to say this, but I'm going to put that comment up there and feel right. Totally get that. But in, in terms of, of Suho's comment about him not handling the pandemic well, who, who would have handled that well? We've never had something like that happen. We had like 20 million people, I think just in the state of California, apply for unemployment benefits. Like that's why the phone lines were all backed up. Like they didn't know what was going to happen. There was no, I, I truly believe that there's no way that they could have known, right? I like when, when my business, well, not my business, but where, when the place that I worked for shut down, they told us, see you in two weeks. So it was like mid April. I want to say it was, uh, it was March 18th. I want to say that we shut down. No, March 15th. Sorry. March 15th is when we shut down. <coughs> and they were like, see you in two weeks. See you on April 1st. Ha ha jokes, April fools, because we were mandated to be closed for a year. Like I, I know that sometimes the government has information that like the public doesn't, but I don't believe that they knew. I don't believe that there was a good solution for what happened. I don't believe, you know, some people were like, let us out of isolation. Other people were like, enforce it more. Like, I don't think that there was any one solution that was magically going to be the right solution. You know what I mean? Like that, those were, terrible circumstances, terrible, terrible, terrible circumstances. And I don't think that there was like an easy, easy solution. Thank you. Live your life for saying that. And yeah, I try and stay like pretty neutral on the channel. Um, I don't necessarily think this channel is like the place for my specific political views, but like just there was no easy way for that. I, I don't think they knew. I don't think businesses knew. I don't think the politicians knew. I really think that they thought like keep people stay home for two weeks and we'll, we'll be back to business as usual. And then they were like, oh my goodness, like what are we, even now, I don't think we really know what we're dealing with, right? Because like no one's really wearing a mask anymore. 
I was thinking about the other virus that's going around right now. And I know that it's mainly affecting one group of people. I know that it's skin to skin contact. Um, but I was at the gym, right? And nobody's masking up at the gym anymore. And what happens at the gym? You sit on a piece of equipment, you get your sweaty body fluids, even if it's just your palms on like the elliptical or the weights. And they're still telling people to like wipe down the equipment and they still have the sanitizing equipment out, but not that many people are using it. So are we just sitting in everybody else's sweat when we go to the gym? Is that like dangerous? Is this going to get worse? I don't know. Anyway, let's not catastrophize. Let's, let's we got to close this out on something positive. Um, so I am just going to say that um, live your life still wears your mask. Yeah. And it, depending on where I'm at, I will too. Um, although I just, I've called it the big C. I recently had the big C, so I, I should still have some immunity built up from that. Like it was real recent, like within the last month. Um, so I had my first booster, but I had, I didn't have my second booster. I think I'm going to try and get my second booster after it's been 90 days. But anyway, um, let's close this out on some good news. And so I'm just going to say that if you're eligible for the student loan debt forgiveness, I hope that the process is smooth and that provides some relief um, off of your finances and that your financial situation improves because of this. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Shelly's Millions. I'll see you next time. Have a good night.